which you can have free speech, especially in our elected parliament. I think it's brilliant. I'm really glad that he had the confidence to say something. And unfortunately, as you say, I think, you know, he did so knowing he was going to get backlash. This isn't the first time that this has happened, um, especially being a man um, speaking on abortion, which makes no sense because truth is truth, no matter who says it. Um, so I'm really pleased that he that he said something for sure. Do you think this will encourage others to give their opinion? They may well be uh, one or two ministers, for example, around the cabinet table who think, actually, I agree with him. Or do you think, as I, as I assume Amy might well say in a minute, that this is just a view that is exclusively found within a very small minority of people? It's definitely not exclusively found in a small minority of people. Um, 70% of women in the UK do want to see a reduction um, in our abortion law time limit, which is currently very high. Um, so I don't think that he's actually in the minority in that sense. Whether it will encourage more people to speak out or not, I'm not sure. I'd like to think that it will inspire more people, but also the backlash that he's received and the horrendous abuse that he's got online, I think will make a lot of people want to not say anything for fear of of something they may receive themselves. Amy, putting aside your view on, on being pro-choice, do you actually think there is a problem that we've identified here where someone like Danny Kruger can't give his opinion? Or do you think it's exclusively right, actually, that this should be a women-only debate? I think the problem here is that it's a politician having a say on what should or shouldn't go on in a woman's body. And that isn't the decision of politicians. That's a healthcare choice. That's an individual healthcare choice between a woman and her doctor. Um, and this is what we've seen in America. It's a very slippery slope where when um, politicians start getting involved in this type of thing, we've seen what can happen. And I think when people heard Danny Kruger say what he said, they got alarm bells that similar um, a similar situation could unfold in the UK as to what we've seen in America, which instills, rightly so, fear in um, the hearts of most women in the country. Yeah. Um, Madeline, I'm wondering then, how do you think we can get to a point as a society where, because I, do, I don't know if you saw this, both of you actually, but uh, Prue Leith, who was Danny Kruger's mother, the famous baker, and she's world-renowned, she actually wrote a piece in The Spectator saying she herself, it, what, they weren't her comments and she's pro-choice. She herself was hounded online for the comments her son made. I'm wondering, Madeline, does this not tell us about the really toxic atmosphere out there where if you say something that goes against the Twitter grain, then hell hath no fury like Twitter scorned. Absolutely. And I think especially if it's on a topic like abortion and you're a man um, and you have the wrong opinion. I mean, just a few days ago, Prince Harry was being celebrated for his opinion on abortion because he had what what Twitter think is, you know, the right opinion. So he's a man with an opinion on abortion that is considered the correct one. So we celebrate him. But someone like um, Danny Kruger has the incorrect opinion. And so we just slander him as much as possible. Amy, I think the the reason that people would say that that is the incorrect opinion is because you can't be pro-life. If you're pro-life, you're either pro-forced birth or pro-making the procedure extremely unsafe for women and endangering women and also alienating a lot of women from being able to access an abortion because they haven't got the finances to travel. Um, so there isn't such thing as pro-life. And I think that's why it's an untenable position to take. Amy, yeah, I, I, you know, there will be some people watching this who disagree with that point of view. But the point is, though, do you think that the, and I mentioned the, the uh, hounding of Prue Leith, Danny Kruger's mother there, do you think people should ultimately be allowed to express what they would call pro-life views? Of course they should be allowed to express whatever they like. It's free speech. But I also think equally they shouldn't be surprised when they're greeted with very valid criticism 
potentially from women who have experienced this issue firsthand. And I think that's why people have a problem with men getting involved, because this can't happen in your body. So you will never know the pain and the absolute um, disarray of being faced with the reality that something's invaded your body, essentially, and you are very limited in your options. And it's an extremely trapping place to be. And I think that's why people get frustrated when men enter the argument. So, Madeline, then, where do we draw the line here, then, between genuine disagreement and a hounding of, of a certain opinion to a point where someone feels they may lose their livelihood, their income, their goodness only knows what? You know, Danny Kruger, I doubt, will be rushing to tweet anytime soon. I think it comes down to the, the content of the debate itself. If we're criticising arguments, then that's great. And that's what healthy debate should be. But when we're criticising an individual purely because of their genitalia, that doesn't make any sense. So in terms of what Amy was saying, you know, if we look at Danny Kruger's actual comments in Parliament, what he said was true. It is a different body. The, the, the unborn child, the fetus is not an invasion inside a woman. That is where an unborn child is supposed to be. So we can't start saying that they've invaded it or anything like that. And if we look at his actual comments, they're completely in line with science. It's got different DNA to the mother. It's a unique human being. Um, and that's the no. part of the argument. Um, Amy, can cancer I... cells have a unique Amy? DNA. They also welcome to hang around inside your body. The baby, the fetus, the embryo can't survive without the mother. It is very much an invasion okay. of her body. At that age. Baby, so Amy, before I... Before yeah, before I let you continue that particular discussion, can I just ask you, Amy, do you think that you have to be of a, of a certain group in order to speak on issues relating to that group? So, for example, you've got to be a woman to speak on abortion. For example, you've got to be a gay man to speak on pride today, maybe in London. For example, you've got to be a trans person to speak about trans issues. You've got to be a black and minority ethnic person to speak on issues relating to certain communities. How do you actually go about enforcing that? Do you think that's the way it should be? Because that strikes me, the direction that we're heading in or the argument that's been made here. No, of course not. But it always helps to have a person who's affected by the issue in the room. Like when we talk the, about trans people, we need to have a trans voice involved in that conversation. I think the reason people um, at the moment want to limit what men have to say on this topic is because words like what Danny Kruger said yesterday, they're harming women. They In America, in 13 states, women will die because of what decision has been made. So that's why we want to maybe clamp down on who's involved and what's being said and actually look at the real life consequences of these words and these actions, because they're affecting women solely. So of course, we need to listen to women first. So Madeline, would you agree with that then? Do you think it's right for those that and we hear a lot, don't we? The watchword of the moment is lived experience. Do you have to have lived experience in order to have a view on these issues? I mean, anecdotally, uh, someone very, very close to me in my family, we lost what would have been a, a, a little girl, my, my sister. And that informed my view. And it's a deeply, I understand, a deeply emotional, emotive view. I'll never, ever forget watching my mother break her heart at the loss of what would have been her child. Can I not talk about that, is what I'm asking you today. I think in this day and age, unfortunately, lived experience and feeling seems to be what's given, given weight. Um, but I think there needs to be place for both. I think we need to look at the people behind the issue, absolutely but also the arguments themselves have merit. And we need to look at what is actually being said. Is it true? Does it make sense? Does abortion end the life of an innocent human being? Science would say yes. Um, and therefore, that's a whole other area that we also need to look at. And in terms of only allowing women to speak on this issue, it takes two to create a child. You know, Danny Kruger is, is capable of creating life and in fact, we need men in order to get pregnant in the first place. So to completely cut them out of the argument um, makes zero sense. Amy, but do I think, you think if you want, if you, if you want to talk about things 
that are true uh, relates to this topic at the moment. 11 year olds are being forced to carry children to term and give birth to them. Uh, uh, victims of incest are being forced to carry children to term. Children are dying in the womb and then people are having to give birth to them at the end of the, the pregnancy. This is not right. And if you, think, if you want to talk about the, the reason why this um, issue is so crucial that we hang on to the argument as we have it here and we don't follow what's happened in America in any way or even entertain, which is what Danny Kruger was doing. He was entertaining the idea that what's happened in America could happen here. And that is just barbaric and out of the question. So, Amy, is it your view then, and you touched on this earlier, but is it your view that the, the decision, the issue of abortion in general on rights and limits and all the rest of it, that shouldn't be in the hands of politicians? No, it's completely a reproductive right. It's a healthcare issue. But there's so many different circumstances and scenarios that lead to a woman as a last resort needing to seek an abortion. And it's certainly not the decision of a politician whether she can have control over what is growing and depending on her body for survival. Madeline, that final question to you. It should be. Our laws and, and our morality are heavily linked. Our laws are there to protect the vulnerable. Unborn children, I think, are clearly the most vulnerable, especially if we look at the millions of abortions that have happened in the UK since the law began about 50 years ago. And, and a good society, a healthy society, protects the most vulnerable. We don't just sharpen to the side. So we need our laws to do that. And our politicians are those that, that project that for us. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. But I, I, sorry, Amy, we are going to have to leave it there. But I want to thank you both for a very civil discussion on a very emotive <laughs> issue that tugs on the heartstrings of both sides of the argument. So thank you very much to Madeline Page there and Amy Nickell before that. Joining me, of course, to discuss the MP Danny Kruger's comments on abortion rights.